Sven Dupre is a historian of science. Today, he's following in Galileo's footsteps on a shopping trip. We have a letter of Galileo, and on the back of that letter, there's jotted down a shopping list, a shopping list of uh, items that uh, Galileo himself or one of his servants was supposed to bring back from a shopping trip to Venice. Very ordinary items, daily items from, uh, that he needed, things like peas, uh, oranges, sugar, pepper, a hat and slippers for his son. So far, so ordinary, but the list continues. On this list, we also find some, some more surprising uh, items, like pieces of flat mirror glass and one of these, an artillery ball. Strange as it sounds, the artillery ball is a crucial clue. Now, this makes us suspect that what Galileo was actually um, after was to buy in Venice, at that time, one of the premier centers of glass making and mirror making in the world, to buy mirror glass to actually grind lenses. Galileo was making what would become known as a telescope. He saw the telescope as a chance to change his life. His plan was to show it to the ruler of Venice in the hope he would be rewarded. But first of all, he needed glass. The home of Venetian glassmaking is the island of Murano. And Galileo would have had good reason to buy his glass from here. The difference between Murano glass and other glass is that Murano glass is much more clear than uh, other glass of the same period, which often has a greenish tint. To make a telescope lens, you had to start with flat glass. Nowadays, it could be simply rolled into a sheet. But 400 years ago, it wasn't so simple. What you would do is you would blow a glass bulb. Once you have the glass bulb, you shape it into a, a cylinder by rolling it onto a flat plate. Once we have the uh, hot cylinder, we make a cut in it so that it opens. And by heating it again to about 700 degrees Celsius, it unfolds like you see here. The result is a piece of flat glass. But finding the glass was only the first step. Galileo had to work out a way of turning the raw material into a lens fit for his telescope. Hidden in another part of Venice is the workshop of a world-renowned lens maker, Romano Zen. Romano has taken Sven's clear piece of glass and is shaping it ready for grinding. And this is where the mysterious artillery ball comes in. The right way to get a concave surface is to use a convex object. By making his own lenses, Galileo was joining knowledge and reason with the practicality of craftsmanship. It's a trend that's important in Western science. This type of abrasion removes less material, but leaves a cleaner surface. Unlike Romano, Galileo wasn't an expert in optics. To make lenses with greater magnification, he simply experimented with the curve of the glass. Out of a hundred lenses, Galileo was happy with only one or two. But within a few weeks, by trial and error, he had made the most powerful lenses in the world. He put them together in a telescope, took it up the highest bell tower in Venice, and pointed it towards the sea. Through it, Ships that were 50 kilometers away look 10 times closer. The ruler of Venice was so impressed, he doubled Galileo's salary. It seemed his fortune was made. 